It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello, basketball fans. I'm Ernie Johnson, welcoming you to 2K Sports. I'm here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Tonight, we'll be watching the Houston Rockets playing against the Brooklyn Nets. Looking at the Nets, this game will be a big challenge. Facing one of the top teams in the league, they'll need to be at their best to win it. And some of the best guards in the league facing off tonight. Different skill sets, different styles. Kenny, if you had to build a guard from scratch, mm. what are some of the characteristics you'd look for? Oh, no question. I'd, I'd take the um, shooting touch of Steph Curry. I'd take the... He makes it look Steph effortless. Curry. I'd take the toughness of Russell Westbrook. I'd take the basketball savvy of Chris Paul. And I'd throw a just... You'd take the defense of... I'll take the defense of Tony Allen and throw it all together. You wouldn't put it all together, Shaq? Is that making you tired and sleepy? Is Wake this, up! Is this boring oh, you? Uh, I, I would want toughness. You have to be able to switch on to certain players, the bigger players, uh, and I would like the leadership. And give me the size of Michael Carter-Williams. The, the size of Michael Carter. How about the size of Magic Johnson? No, that's a little bit too big. Oh, okay. Yeah, because later on in the career. Huh? Wake up, man. <laughs> what happened? Oh, uh, that, you know, leadership. Oh, sorry. And I'll take the ability not to go to sleep like Shaq. Well, if you answer the question. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave oh, the land the Nets on a road trip for this one and interconference game today looking for the win we've got some terrific NBA action in store for you today this is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony David Aldridge is on our sideline here in Houston it's another home game for the Rockets so important to get off on the right foot new year new season these guys have done it you know they've had an absolutely ideal start to this season they were fresh and, and ready and motivated from day one and, and you know what the results have been there for them and let's go straight over to David Aldridge for a report before the tip off hey Dave well guys James Harden is a great offensive player but there's no mistaking it he does dominate the ball now that can bother teammates sometimes but coach Mike D'Antoni says when they feel that paycheck every two weeks that should make them play hard you have to be a star in your role so when James gets the ball to you, shoot it, and then run back and play hard as heck. Kevin? Thanks. He's a great passer, David. There's no doubt he can set the table. And Clark, tonight we have an incredible matchup at the guard position. What do you think we'll see? Well, both of these guys are outstanding scorers, and they get their own shot rather easily. So that'll be fun to watch. And not only can they get their own shot, but they're both good at creating for others as well. So. I tell you what, this could be a doozy, Kevin. This could really be a lot of fun to watch. Get a nice clean game, huh? So the Rockets win the tip. Here are the starters for Brooklyn. Lynn and Russell are in the backcourt. Alan Crabb out there with Okafor. And it's Mozgov in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Capella with the bucket. Outstanding presence of mind. Harden is constantly looking for the open shooter. Now Lynn, picked by Mozgov. Lynn kicks to Russell. Over Anderson. And Chris Paul picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And that's a quick foul for him there. Looks like the refs are going to call this one pretty close. Here's Lynn. They set the screen to the left side wing. Grab the pass to Mozgov. Tries again. No good off the back of the rim. 
On defense, the Nets they come into this one following the loss to the Grizzlies. Yeah, and in a hostile environment, they did not rise to the occasion, especially on the defensive side. Yeah, there was no shine on that effort. Really lackluster. Their D was nowhere to be found. Great way to see the alley-oop. That replay courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. It's stolen by Capella. Ball against Lynn. And the wide open shot from Paul. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. On defense, Houston, they are coming into this having notched a win against the Knicks in their last game. And it says a lot about you that even when you're not at your best, they definitely were still in that game and able to win comfortably. Greg, the, they were better than the box score might indicate because they were solid in execution, more so than the stats would show. Working the in-between area, the kind of look that can get you into a rhythm early. Yeah, and I think all credit goes to that being just good offense. I mean, those are the kind of shots they want, and they got them. And the rejection by Harden. Still scoreless after four attempts, trying to take the lid off the basket. Screen by Capella. Ariza with another miss. The Nets have gone 0-4, missing their first four field goals here. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. There's Russell with the three, and again, no good by Brooklyn. Paul for three, good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Paul's got five points so far. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Here's Okafor, shot to end this cold run. He lays it in. Excellent concentration that time by Okafor. Even with the defense in his face, he never lost sight of the hoop. And here is Paul. He's got five. With some arc. And no good that time. Well, he mistimed it just a skosh. Don't think the defense really had an impact. I think he just flat out missed it. And setting the tone early with a strong move to the rack. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness and the fearlessness there, Greg. I mean, very committed to getting the shot he wanted. Capella with the bucket. You know, Capella's really hard to deal with inside, especially inside. Does a nice job using his size to get that shot off. Now here's Lynn. He's coming off a 13-point game against Memphis. Mozgov kicks to Russell. Russell a screen on Hart. Lynn dishes to Crank. Brooklyn needs to get off a shot here. Mozgov with the bucket. Tell you what, if you let him get his feet set, Mozgov can bury that jumper. And he has nice rhythm with it, too. To the paint. A flawless finish on the alley -oop. Oh, my goodness. Say, save that one. I, I want to see that again. Me, too. Just absolutely beautiful. Virtually impossible to top that alley-oop. Now here's Mozgov. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And three blocks on the game as well. I mean, he was going all out and making plays defensively. Yeah, that aggressiveness of Okafor on the glass, a high percentage score when he gets a second chance opportunity. And guys, what do you think about the offensive approach so far that we've seen for the Rockets? You know what, guys? It looks to me like they're really in sync here, all on the same page. They've already got a bunch of assists. Yeah, they're showing some muscle also in the first half as well and, and getting a lot of their points in the paint. Really like the balance they've shown. That one misses for Okafor. Clark, how long into a season do you wait until win-loss counts really start to matter? I don't know if you can put a specific timeline on it, Kevin, but I think you kind of look at the season in maybe 10-day windows or five-game windows, maybe a month window. It varies from coach to coach. For me personally, I would try to look at things in 10-day to two-week windows and then evaluate from that standpoint. Here's Lynn. James Harden picking up that last basket. In the pass to Mozgov. And Mozgov throws it down. That huge frame of Mozgov helps him convert through contact. 
Paul kicks to Harden. Here's Ariza. They get it again. Russell against Harden. Screen by Capella. Second shot opportunity. James Harden again. Harden's got six points. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. Greg, you're exactly right. I mean, everything seems to be dropping. Impressive scoring here. Now here's Cram. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And you can call him three Angelo. I like that because mm -hmm. he's going to be doing this for a long time. Three deep for three Angelo. It'll be fun watching him. You're right. Anderson's shot is off. Tell you what, Kevin, they will take that look every time. Limited defense, great shot. Just came up empty. You live with those. And, and a big move for D'Angelo Russell this past offseason. Traded from the Lakers to Brooklyn. Now one of the major building blocks of, of this team that has embraced him wholeheartedly. down the first one and with the draft spot the Lakers had and the spotted history with D'Angelo Russell you know Greg it wasn't a huge shock to see him move you know just seemed to me that Russell wasn't the right fit for what LA wanted to do still a very young and, and talented player who has a chance to kind of reinvent himself here in New York uh, he's shown a bit more maturity since that trade and, and since joining this team. You know, a decent free throw shooter at this point in his career, D'Angelo has the natural stroke, I think, to become one of the league's best. Shoots it very fluidly and easily. To the middle. And stolen by Russell. Here's Carroll. Kicks it to Russell. He feeds it to Mozgov. Russell against Harden. Okafor sets the pick for Russell inside and then Okafor slams it in boy the energy by Okafor on display there really just kind of willed that shot in over some pretty stingy defense Houston's gone one of three from beyond the arc so far in the game Harden dishes to Capella Mozgov with the block Coach is liking what he's seeing from his offense. And guys, they put the defense on the defensive. Here's Harden and the jam by Harden. Now you can't sleep on this guy's finishing ability. He loves getting room to throw it down on you. And he'll put you in a poster if you let him. Here's Dinwiddie looking for his first basket still in this one. He dishes it to Carroll. No oh, good on that one. Good work defensively by Capella. It's Ariza on the win. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got his fourth assist in this one. And Ariza has great confidence in his shot. A dynamite catch and shoot play. Here's Dinwiddie. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And it's Russell missing. Well, not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let, let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Anderson a screen on Carroll. Reza passes to Capella. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. And it's a six-point rocket lead. Great start for him. 4-4. Four, four. He could be in for a big game. Certainly looks that way to me, partner. I mean, his energy level is ramped up. I think he's been terrific right from the opening tip. And Okafor slams it in. That's exactly the kind of selflessness you want to see from Okafor. I mean, willing to give up his body as a screen so it opens up some opportunities for his teammates. And Houston calls their first time out of the game. They're getting their first look of the season at the Nets in this one. And last season, they made short work of this club. Two games, two wins. They may have wished for more games against them. A definite disparity in talent. We'll see if they take advantage again tonight. Mark, there are a lot of great rim protectors right now in the NBA. Yeah, there sure are. And um, there are a couple, though, that stand out to me. Gobert and Whiteside. I mean, they are just like octopuses in their <laughs> ability right. to hover around that rim and challenge and change and 
block shot. So those two guys really stand out to me. Yeah. I also think you've got to consider DeAndre Jordan, too. With his athleticism, he's become better as a rim protector in his last few years. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Here's Lavert looking in his numbers. He averages a bit over nine points a game. There's Hollis Jefferson. And Ba'amute pulls it in. And you can see at this stage of his career, just still not comfortable as a finisher at the basket. Brown outside. That shot missing. Nets trail by four. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. On defense, Brooklyn. Pass to Gordon. Nene, the screen. Five to shoot. Gordon goes in. On defense, Avert showing great versatility. I mean, this guy's doing a nice job getting his hand up in the face of shooters. Carroll, score of the basket. Nice shot after missing his first attempt and they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Nene, the screen. Brown outside. Out to the right wing. Screen by Baamute. And it's Brown missing. Brooklyn trailing. This is Allen. Baamute with the steal. And now, here comes Gordon leading the break, and it's Gordon finishing it off. And that's how to make an impact with defense. Once the steal is made, you know they're going to be scattered. It's Carroll on the wing. That one falls coming off Dinwiddie's feet. Carroll's got his second basket of the night. And how about Carroll using his size there, taking it strong inside. Round kicks to Gordon. Screen by Baamute. Tucker dishes to Brown. Down to five on the shot clock. Shoots the three. Houston gets it back. And Tucker kicks to Nene. Just a moment to look back at how things were last season for this team as we look at the shot breakdown for the Rockets. And their offense centered around the three-point shot. That was the guiding principle on every trip. Their first goal was finding an open look beyond the arc, getting that extra point every chance they could. The first free throw is good. And, you know, Kevin, there is no question about what this Rockets team wants to do. Shoot threes and drive it to the goal. Last in the league in mid-range jumpers by a long shot. And both free throws good for Nene. Nets trail by four. There's 42 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Nene against Allen. Lavert the pass to Dinwiddie. Shot clock at five. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Dinwiddie's got his first points of the game. Just impressed with the teamwork out there, setting the table for one another. Five straight baskets, Greg, resulting from assists. They're playing as one unit out there. Shots good from Mba Amute. And a lot of scoring here early on. This is the type of game the fans love to see. Tell you what, Greg, it's getting to the point where you assume every shot is going to go down. I mean, nobody's missing out there. Here's Dinwiddie. He got it up in time, but it wouldn't fall for him. James Harden getting it done for Houston. He was a true standout at the offensive end both with his scoring and his passing. 
back right after this. And earlier, Chris Paul told us about the depth of their roster. So important for any team. Our bench is amazing. It's so exciting because when our bench comes in, uh, more often than not, if we're losing, they're going to get us the lead. And if we have the lead, they're going to increase the lead. And it's, it's fun to watch because everybody cheers for each other, too. When your starters feel that good about their second unit, guys, that's a heck of a asset that a team can have and if you've seen Chris Paul cheering from the bench you know that it's very very true and Kevin that's the kind of team that that's always been so much fun to play on everybody's really pulling for one another no matter who's playing e even in practice uh, with that kind of a team you tend to have more fun All right, the second quarter beginning in just a moment. And looking at what we've seen from Houston, what do you guys think? Playing smart in this first period. Credit their unselfish play. Yeah, and you know, that cohesion is really impressive, Greg. I mean, they know how to get each other going and feed off of each other, and that's crucial. On the court right now, second quarter starting for the Nets. Lavert and Carroll are the wingmen. Hollis Jefferson is out there with Allen, and it's Dinwiddie in at the point. The Nets have shot two of three from the free throw line tonight. Clark, you were a strong free throw shooter when you played. Why do some big men have such a hard time being at least serviceable at the free throw line? Well, I'm not as big as some of the biggest guys that have the most trouble. Typically, you see guys north of 6'8", six, 6'9", six, struggling tremendously from the line in general. And because of that, I think sometimes it's the mechanics of shooting the ball. And big hands can sometimes be a hindrance to that. Oftentimes, it's a matter of how much do you work at it. And how soon do you start working at it? A lot of times, big guys tend to focus on their post moves and scoring the ball close to the bucket and not as much as shooting. But you're seeing more and more big guys with sweet strokes. And I think it's a matter of, again, basic fundamentals, mechanics, and then putting in hours and hours and hours of work on it. Here's Gordon. And count it. And a chance for one more at the free throw line. Nice to see Gordon use his touch down low. I mean, not the biggest guy but still skilled at scoring close to the bucket. And Eric Gordon has long been noted as a terrific shooter, but I felt like he was able to display just how great he can be last season. Had that green light whenever he was on the floor and really What's near up? the top of the league in terms of threes attempted and made. And for Gordon, he's been a great catch-and-shoot player in the past, Greg. The difference last season was the improvement in his pull-up three. And there is a world of difference between shooting a three off the pass as opposed to off the dribble. Uh, the pull-up threes are what make players like Steph Curry so hard to guard. And when Gordon added that to his game, I think it helped his overall ability to score the basketball. And, you know, Kenny Atkinson is a basketball lifer, Kevin. Played professionally abroad, and after his playing career was over, he went right into coaching. The Nets have shot 75% at the line tonight, going three for four. And really, the form at the line all season has been terrific. 79% as a team. free throw is good and Atkinson with a couple years as an assistant in Paris four years in New York with the Knicks 
came from Atlanta where he was a big time assistant and well thought of by fellow Hawk players. Yeah you know and after a decade as an assistant Kevin he led the Dominican national team so he's had a vast reservoir of experiences on the sidelines as a coach and now he's of course leading the Brooklyn Nets and had a chance to hear him at a conference last year and this guy is really really got a chance to be outstanding as a coach and leader. Now here's Brown. 14 points from him the last game against New York. Passes it to Nene. His second shot goes in off to a good start two for two. Look at the intensity of Nene. One of the strongest guys in the game. Phenomenal at scoring the ball inside. On the sideline let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, guys, the Houston Rockets, one of the most explosive scoring teams in the league. Defense has been a shortcoming in the past. Coach Mac D'Antoni said, we have some good individual defenders. If the rest of them just try, well, that's the plan. Kevin? Offense is what the Rockets are all about, D.A. You know that. Coach D'Antoni definitely focuses on this part of the game more than defense. They get it back. That's in, and he's now three for three and looking sharp. Another rebound hauled in. They're hitting the glass with a lot of passion. Guys, that's been the key to their lead. I mean, simply put, the effort they've displayed on the glass has been the difference. Now here's Allen looking for his first basket still in this one. Here's Levert. Lays it up off the glass. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. Nene dishes to Gordon. Pass to Tucker. Screen by Baamute. A three ball. Tucker can't get it to go. Nets trail by seven. There's Hollis Jefferson. Off target at the rim. Just tentative in the paint. Lacking a little bit of confidence. Allowed the defender to recover and contest that shot. Brown kicks to Mba Amute. Down low. Allen with the rebound. Allen's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Here's Crab. And the layup's good off the glass. Crab's got four this quarter. Huge hole in the defense that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. Nene, the screen. Brown kicks it to Tucker. Up off the screen, and he comes off the screen and slams it through. Yeah, you know, Tucker's a little undersized, but he makes up for it with leaping ability and reach. Then the pass to Allen. Over to the wing. Takes the three. And it's Levert missing. Rockets leading by seven. Here's Gordon. Makes it off the glass. Gordon's got ten points in the game. Well, I like the first quarter he had. I mean, and I'm loving the second quarter even more. Playing with a lot of momentum right now. Now here's Cram. Six points for him. Sinks the three-pointer. Crab's got his third basket of the night. You know what, guys? He can really light it up from the perimeter at times. Timeout called the Rockets. And, you know, the Nets can't sell players on winning just yet, but they've created a top-notch infrastructure in the meantime, and they have a gleaming new practice facility, better accommodations for players' families during the game. Those little things are big things and make a difference. Houston, a whole new five on the floor. And then for Brooklyn, Mozgov. He's checked in for Allen. Okafor comes in for Rondé Hollis Jefferson. And it's Russell in for Lavert. Now here's Paul. He's coming off a 13-point game against New York. And don't forget about his assists. His playmaking was as good or better than his scoring. He was in complete control out there. Now Lynn following Chris Paul's three-point attempt. Just his first attempt. Lynn's shot is off. You talk about the top-notch facilities for the Nets, you figure it signals their intent to be a top-notch franchise. Well, you've got to invest in the development, and that means facilities and people. Uh, you've got to take care of your players and their families. That's important. And players really take note of those kinds of things. And if you're going to do it well, 
you got to do those things right. Clark, you know we like to reach out to the fans and have them send in questions, so I've got one right now. Here's Alex in Ohio, of all places. Uh, he asks, what sport other than basketball are you best at? I specialized early, Alex. Uh, I was a decent athlete, had good hands, could catch and throw a football pretty well, but didn't like the contact there. Right now, I'm actually just a good workout guy, and I'm trying to become a better than average golfer. That's good for Mozgov. And last year, one of the bigger surprises in the NBA, the Houston Rockets. And remember, absent Dwight Howard, a lot of people thought maybe they're going to take a step back. And in the year where several other super teams in the league kind of took a step forward, the Rockets were able to hold their own. The team has a system that works, and they have bought into it. And top to bottom, they've been making smart decisions. Mozgov hits them both. Got to like the confidence. Such an important part of making shots. Nice seeing a big man knock down free throws. To the inside. And it goes out of bounds. Uh, last touch by Paul. And a brief check now of the stats for Mozgov. What a run he's been on over the past few weeks. Sixth in shooting percentage. And he's among the top 15 in rebounding. Just a powerful presence in the paint. And back to his phenomenal efficiency from three. Top 10 in the league. His consistent shooting creates so many openings in the defense. Mozgov a screen on Harden. Russell dishes to Okafor. Back to Russell. Stolen by Harden. Lob pass to Capella. Good for the fifth time in five shots. He remains perfect. Got to DM up better than that. I mean, when he's got a smaller guy on him inside, that's dinner. Barbecue chicken. Mm, that, that sounds good. <laughs> I love that. Now, here's Okafor. He had a 21-point outing in their last game against the Grizzlies in Memphis. Yeah, but I like how he defended as well. You know, he got a couple blocks in that game and just an all-around great effort. Here is Harden after the basket by Timothy Mosgaw. Harden kicks to Anderson. Lays it up and banks it in. And the Rockets lead by six. Those defenders just look a little bit gassed. I mean, they're getting pushed around on that low block. Outside, Lynn. Picked by Mozgov. Lynn the pass to Mozgov. Good work defensively by Capella. The defense ready for him on that possession. They had to be because he is so strong in the paint. Paul dishes to Ariza. The drive by Paul, and he banks in the layup. And it's an eight-point rocket lead. You know, for a small guy, you got to respect how calm Paul is inside. I mean, he knows he can get his shot over anybody, but he's got to be crafty and clever to do so. Good display of patience there. Lynn kicks to Okafer. The feed now to Craig. Back to Okafer. Six on the shot clock. The pass to Mozgov. Nets passing it around. And they'll turn it over. Could not get off his shot. 24-second violation. Let's bring out the 2K leaderboard to see the best up-tempo teams in the league. The Rockets fourth. Yeah, I mean, they've got the athletes to run the break all game long. So that's their edge. They're always looking to take advantage. Here's what Brooklyn's going with right now. Damari Carroll comes in for Crab, And Spencer Dinwiddie subbed in for Jeremy Lin. Anderson's shot is off. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Houston leading by eight. Ariza outside. Feeds it to Paul. It's Ariza on the wing. Carroll covering. Anderson with the screen for Ariza. Out left to the wing. Anderson can't get that one to fall. Not quite enough defense that time around. Just lucky he was off. And again, it's the Nets missing. And sometimes, you know, you don't capitalize off a good shot or a good look. Still, you got to keep letting those good looks fly. Now, here's Anderson. Nine points last game out. Here's Harden. A chance to extend the lead to double digits, but it's no good. Nets trail by eight. Here's Dinwiddie. The dish to Carroll. 
to end the drought. He kicks to Dinwiddie over Paul. Dinwiddie's shot is off. And that's the shot you want to create. They just can't get it to fall. That's what I call an everything but good execution. Just didn't knock it down. But you're right. They're happy with that shot. And the first timeout call to the game for Brooklyn. And one of the surprise moves of this past offseason was Chris Paul moving to Houston, joining James Harden to become one of the strongest backcourts in our league. Kicked off a feeling that Houston would be a force this season. Here we are in November. Let's see how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. But we'll take a look at the Warriors. Things going their way so far in this season. Right now, they lead the pack up front in the first spot with the best record. And, of course, the Rockets, three and a half back. And, you know, Houston, as talented a team as they are, has performed at a very high level this season. Everything's gone according to plan up to this point. And they're not a team that other teams look forward to facing. They're only going to get scarier the deeper into the season we get. Houston leading by nine. And, you know, Greg, many thought that Chris Paul may take a look at San Antonio, and he did, but Houston was too enticing a chance to pass up. It's certainly a distinctive third chapter in Paul's career. He's always been criticized for not going deep in the playoffs and saw Houston as maybe his best bet to make a deep run. And the Nets with possession here. Trevor Ariza, missing from long range. Bit of an oversized playmaking guard allows Russell to see over and around defenders. Great look there. A minute 50 left in the second quarter. Paul with the ball. Seven points in the game. Capella inside. Mozgov covering. Here's Dinwiddie. Outside, Russell. Three-pointer. Here's Okafor. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. That's what we're talking about in terms of the activity level defensively. You got to protect the rim. Mm -hmm. Textbook defense all around. Nice job at contesting the shot without fouling. And that's how you do it. Well done. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. Okafor's got 10 points in the game. That is really outstanding work by Okafor. He's a real talent in the paint. Here's Harden. Brooklyn with the rebound. Okafor's got his seventh rebound here tonight. And it's thrown down hard with both hands. And the mentality that we're seeing from Carroll, even a spot-up guy needs to seize those opportunities. Houston leading by three. Harden the pass to Capella. Lob pass to Capella. Hammers the alley-oop through. Oh, I like how Capella stays one step ahead of the posse on defense. Has a real good sense of body control. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Dinwiddie with the bucket. Six points for him. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Now here's Paul. Seven points in the game. Ariza outside. No good on the three. And we're through the first half of basketball here in what's been a good one. Houston on top, up by three. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Kevin, thank you. Jalil, you had it going offensively in the first half. How do you keep that going? Uh, keep trusting my teammate, listen to the coaches. They're putting me in a great position. Uh, so, jump out, second half focus. Man, a few words, Jalil. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. And now. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson joined by Kenny the Jet Smith hey. and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Been working out. Houston was looking great right away. They staged a good old-fashioned ambush, going on an aggressive 9-0 run at the start. Once they got on the scoreboard, they were relentless at staying out in front never once letting the lead change hands. 
and into the second quarter, momentum started to shift slightly as they gave up some of that lead, ending the half up three. Kenny, what'd you think about the Rockets? Well, I thought that turning point was when the bench came in. Those guys really hustled and they gave the team some energy and then they started to score baskets. That was a bonus. And over to the big fella, your thoughts on the Nets. They played some solid team basketball, Ernie. Pretty good. They were sharing the ball. We saw some nice feeds, a lot of movement. It wasn't five individuals out there. It was one cohesive unit, and they got the assist to show for it. Their rhythm was nice. And we're just about ready for the start of the third quarter. Kevin Harlan standing by. We'll see you. And as we return to Houston, Texas, a terrific look at the skyline here. The Toyota Center, part of that great landscape. And it's been a back and forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. Clint Capella really making a difference here. And I loved in that first half that they were patient, looked for good shots, and knocked them down. Yeah, I liked how they took the initiative. They were really locked into what they wanted not letting the defense dictate their shot selection. The third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. Nets trail by three. The two pillars of this team, Chris Paul and Harden, are the one and the two. Ariza and Anderson holding down the forward spots. And it's Capella in at the five. They're the group for Mike D'Antoni starting the second half. I think these are the shots he's got to avoid taking. I mean, already struggling. He's not helping his team right now looking at those shots. Rockets leading by three. 13 feet away. Second chance shot. And Okafor with the block. Boy, I love the defensive game of Okafor. He's got a wide reach, and that allows him to get to a lot of shots. The score now all even. Lynn's got the first bucket of the third here for Brooklyn. And when you're on a young team that's still finding its way, how much does the losing take a toll on you as a player? Well, I can speak to that because I was in that situation back in the early 80s. It does take a toll, but you keep your eye on what's ahead, and you relish the chance to develop as a young player. For the veterans, um, there's a lot less patience for losing record, that's for sure. Well, Swiss center Clint Capella is up there as one of the most efficient players in the league. He's only 22. But he's efficient mostly because all his shots come right at the basket, right on the doorstep. Last season, he finished near the top of the league, in fact, in field goal percentage. And for a while, he was leading the league, if I recall correctly, Kevin. Capella knows who he is, what he's about, and what his team needs from him. So he finishes off his chances that are created by guards penetrating. Not flashy, but very effective. It's been a coaching carousel in Brooklyn in recent years, Clark. Your thoughts on coach Kenny Atkinson who came from Atlanta uh, and what he's done there and what about his staff well you know brave souls and I think Kenny Atkinson has the right approach time will tell what kind of coach he becomes but I like what I've seen from him he confessed that people he respected told him he'd be insane to take the job but nothing ventured nothing gained and he stepped into it the Nets have to return the faith he showed and give him time to build this team Mozgov Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Mozgov's got the game tied up here for the Nets. Nice little move in there. The ever-developing skill set of Timothy Mozgov. Screen by Capella. They set the pick. Shoots over Mozgov. Anderson outside. Launches a three. They get a bet. This shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. Brooklyn's gone one or two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Outside, Lynn, Mozgov up top. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. The offensive rebound. Okafor kicks to Crab. Chance there to take the lead, missing. Puts up a three. That's good for Marisa on the assist by Anderson. Now it's a five-point rocket lead. Got to respect the long-range shooting of Ariza now. A capable shooter from downtown. Watch out. Lynn kicks to Okafor. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jaleel Okafor. That is his first foul of the game. 
Oh, great defense there. Anticipated the play and got there first. And not afraid to put his body on the line either, Greg. He took a shot for the team in that situation. Now here's Paul. Seven points in the game. Mozgov grabs the board. Nets trail by five. Lynn dishes to Okafor. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. That's on Clint Capella. And Jalil Okafor, the third overall pick in 2015 out of Duke. He was in the conversation for top pick overall. Yeah, he certainly was, and deservedly so. Now, his value has fallen off a bit since coming into the league. But with big guys, you've got to be patient. Don't discard him yet. He's a very polished scorer two. and a good finisher around the goal. He's got to improve some other areas, but this guy is going to be around for a long time. That one is off. I'll tell you what, coming straight to the NBA after just one year at Duke, Okafor making an immediate impact in the NBA. Levert's checked in for D'Angelo Russell. And he's good on the second. And when you watch this Rockets team, you can see just how explosive they are on the offensive end. Almost everyone on the floor can hurt you from deep. And they all know their role and execute it to a tee. Now, here's Ariza. Eight points for him. Shot clock at six. Capella with a screen on Lynn. Here's Paul. Terrific design on the pick play. And he lays it in. Paul's got nine. He is almost money when it comes to finishing in close. Nice bucket there to increase the lead. And last season, the Rockets' offense was incredible. Then they go and add Chris Paul. They can run a team off the floor if they get hot. Two great playmakers in Paul and Harden. And making a move for Paul made a lot of teams fear what the Rockets can do now on offense. Now, here is Harden. He averages over 27 points a game and seems to always find a way to score. Mozgov with the block. Timing and sneaky athleticism, Kevin. Allow Mozgov to get to that shot. And here we go. Harden heading to the hoop. Finished off the break. And now it's an eight-point rocket lead. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Vitally important. I mean, if you relax for a second, you're cooked. You're toast. They learned that lesson there. Now here's Okafor. He's got 11. Back to Lynn. To the left wing. Here's Crab. Count the basket. He's got 11. Houston leading by six. Timeout time called time the Rockets. And as the coaches go to the clipboard to outline their strategy during the timeout, the players getting a chance to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's key to staying fresh all the way to the final whistle. And Kevin, it really is. And every one of these players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink especially uh, towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. So for the Rockets, Mbamute's checked in for Anderson. P.J. Tucker comes in for Trevor Ariza. And it's Brown in for Paul. Allen's checked in for the Nets. Hollis Jefferson comes in for Okafor. There's Hollis Je Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a beautiful jam. Yes, indeed. Not many players in the league can play at that elevation. I mean, Hollis Jefferson putting on the show. A high wire act. And the replay presented, of course, by Under Armour. Unleash chaos. Great stuff and some great basketball going on. Inside. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. Here's Lynn. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And the Nets adding their own G League affiliate, the Long Island Nets. Yeah, and the Nets franchise originally, remember, based in Long Island. So nice to have that homecoming. And, of course, with young talent development so critical for this Nets organization, having that minor league team in close proximity, very valuable. Shooting two.
and that one falls for Lynn. And Jeremy Lynn, you know, I think has a great reputation. He's a confident guy who provides energy at both guard spots. Both free throws good from Lynn. Well, you take a look at this Houston Rockets offense. They've got so many threats, and Harden is clearly the big one. He's in the middle of it all, and his teammates do a nice job of playing off of him. Now, here is Harden. He's got 10. Round kicks to Emba Amute. Shot clock at 5. It's Harden with the drive. Can't get it to fall. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. And, you know, that's not easy at all. When guys get this close to the bucket, it's tough to stop the basket. And Clark, so much of the offensive burden has fallen on the shoulders of Hart. Now he's got some help, certainly, with Chris Paul. You know what? As well as Harden played last season at the point guard spot, I think this trade was just too good to pass up. I mean, I anticipate they're going to make one heck of a duo. And it's Allen slamming it down. And the awareness from Lynn, outstanding. A true point guard who really sees the floor well. Houston's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Here's Harden. That's tipped, and they get it back. Brown the pass to Capella. Now, and Mute to the middle. Harden dishes to Capella. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. We take a second here to take a look at the shot chart for Houston. And really what jumps out to me about this shot chart is just how aggressive he's been when on the floor. I mean, he's doing everything he can to get as close to the hoop as possible before putting up that shot, and it's worked out in a big way for him and his team. And the first one drops. Well, I tell you what, it's really impressive how Capella has improved his role so quickly, Kevin. I mean, he's a starting caliber center known for his defense, but continues to make strides on offense, too. Gordon's checked in for James Harden. That one misses. And just a better job of getting to the line here in the second half. Didn't get there once in the first. Levert the pass to Lynn. The putback. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. And so here is Houston. It's a one-point game. Here's Brown. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And a moment here to check out the numbers for Lynn. Averaging about 16 points, five assists, and three rebounds. And his playmaking really stands out, making his teammates better offensively with his terrific passing. Yeah, he's outstanding at controlling the tempo. I mean, keeps the ball moving and, of course, finds the open man. Free throw good from Brown. Houston making a switch. Nene's checked in. And Brown drops them both. Nets have gone a solid 6 of 11 when shooting here in the third quarter. There's Hollis Jefferson. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Now, here's the name. He's got eight. Back to Tucker. The name, the screen. Jumper off the screen, and he hits the jump shot. And the Rockets lead by one. Yeah, you know, we've seen Tucker extend his range over the years, but it's still not that extended. I mean, this in-between area is probably more his natural comfort zone. Here's Lynn. He can't get it to go. And it's Houston the other way. 
They've led by as many as 11 points. Next up will be a home game matched up against the Pacers. That will complete this four-game homestand. Now, here's Brown. Taking a look at his numbers, he averages about seven points a game. Jacks up a three. Nailed from three-point land. Now it's a four-point rocket lead. Boy, I love Eric Gordon as a combo guard. He's a multi-talented player who can play either guard position. A nice shot by Lynn. Lynn's got seven now in this quarter. And they're beginning to just flat-out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg. They've allowed from point-blank range. Can't happen. Here's a peek now at the 2K leaderboard. This year, these teams have made the most of their offensive rebounds. The fourth spot held by the Nets. You know what? Sometimes their missed shots are their best offense. I mean, they attack the glass relentlessly, and those extra possessions can determine the outcome on a lot of nights. First free throw is good. Some changes for Brooklyn. Tamari Carroll's checked in for Alan Cram. And Dinwiddie's subbed in for Jeremy Lin. Good on both. So it's Brooklyn now, trailing by four. Here's Lavert, kicks it to Dinwiddie. Allen, a screen on Brown. Here's Dinwiddie, pass to Hollis Jefferson, just five on the clock. And he lobs it up toward the rim, and then Allen slams it in. Really, it's a thing of beauty to watch Hollis Jefferson move the ball like that. I mean, he's a team-oriented guy who looks to make the pass as much as possible. Now, here's Brown. Seven points in the game. And here's Tucker. He feeds it to Nene. Shoots from the baseline. Bounces high off the rim and drops. Nene's got ten points. Can't be thrown any better. That bounce pass hit him right in stride. Nets trail by four. Passes to Levert. It's Allen on the wing. To the paint. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Tucker can't get it to go. I tell you what, he's doing his best to contribute, but he's been out of sync, out of rhythm. Luckily, this team still is in front. Hollis Jefferson, and sticking right with it, gets the foul with the bucket, and he'll go to the line. Boy, and the power and lift from Hollis Jefferson, able to finish right through contact. All right, we'll take a look now at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for the Rockets. You know, with their fast break operating so efficiently, I mean, you can see why they've gone with it throughout the game. And also, guys, they take a lot of pride in their ability to rebound shot, the gentlemen? basketball, especially on the offensive end. That free throw good from Hollis Jefferson. And you'll hear some say the sleeper of that 2015 draft was Rondé Hollis Jefferson. I mean, a fractured ankle his rookie season limited him to just those 29 games. But when healthy, he's shown he can be a force defensively. Round with it. Seven points in the game. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And Greg, what separates Hollis Jefferson, do you think, as an NBA defender? Uh, you know, physicality, quickness to go along with anticipation. I mean, with his pressure D, he's able to suffocate perimeter players and rack up steals. And don't forget versatility. He's a guy that can guard multiple positions, and that's a huge asset for any team.
That one is off. It's the second from the line. Brooklyn trailing. Out left to the wing. Here's Dinwiddie. Good, and it's Russell picking up the assist. Russell's got his eighth assist in the game. Orchestrating the offense like a vet. D'Angelo getting everybody involved. Now here's Brown. Eight points for him. For three, Gordon. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. No excuse for that kind of defense. I'm positive they're upset about that. That's to Hollis Jefferson. Carroll for three. Bangs home the trifecta. Carroll's got nine. Uh, okay, we got a nice little back and forth going here. Yeah, and I like it. I love seeing that. It's a lot of fun when that happens. These teams are going at each other from the outside. Now here's Nene. Ten points for him. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. That's a very close call. I'm sure he thinks it's a clean block, but looks like it was on the way down. Trevor Ariza's checked in for the Rockets. Paul comes in for Brown. One twenty-one left to play in the third. Here's Dinwiddie. He's got eight. The Nets working the ball around now. Carroll kicks to Russell. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. Now let's see the stat sheet here on Chris Paul. He's been a factor for them over the last month. Third in assists. And of course, he's in the top five in free throw percentage. It can go overlooked, but sure makes a difference. And as you mentioned, top three in assists right now. He does a great job of running the offense, spotting the open guy, and making the sound delivery. Can't cash in from close range. Brooklyn's gone two of five with the three-point shot since coming out of the break. Right side, Gordon. 41 seconds left to play in the third. Shoots from 12. Here's Nene, and play stops as it looks like they call him over the back here. That foul gives him four, so he's got to settle down a bit. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And the first one at the line is good. Anderson, he's checked in for P.J. Tucker. And then for Brooklyn, Mozgov comes in for Allen. And Okafor subbed in for Rondé and Hollis Jefferson. So he picks up just one from the line that time. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Dinwiddie kicks to Carroll. That's tipped, and they're able to recover. Rockets leading by three. And this is where you milk the clock. Yeah, that's the intelligent play here, Greg. No doubt. No reason to chuck up some garbage shot. Mozgov with the block. Here's Dinwiddie. And it would have counted had it fallen, but it's offline. It's still anybody's game as we've reached the end of three. Rockets lead by three. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. All right, the fourth quarter of action getting underway. We've had a great one so far with both sides coming to play.
Houston in the lead. A moment now to reset the lineups. Back to us by Gatorade. All fueled up here for the fourth quarter. And Brooklyn, look at who they've got. Jaleel Okafor is out there with Mazda. And there's D'Angelo Russell. Then it's Damari Carey. And it's Dinwiddie in at the point. Clock at four. Okafor with the steal. Here's Dinwiddie. Mozgov dishes to Carroll over a reason. Offensive rebound. Mozgov with the bucket. Mozgov's got the fourth quarter started here with a bucket for the Nets. Yeah, good work ethic on display from Mozgov. Staying active, making an impact on the offensive board. Here's Paul, and it's in there. Absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice, subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. I could not say it any better, showing you some real focus, taking it inside against the bigger man. Well, Chris Paul signing the big contract this past offseason, and, you know, you knew he'd end up with one of the biggest deals out there, and his impact on a team goes far beyond just stats. The Rockets making a switch here. Harden's checked in. Well, Greg, Houston wanted Chris Paul, and they got their man. One of the bigger surprises, certainly, of the offseason. Yeah, and without Paul on this roster, this team isn't in the conversation for winning. You need him to keep your window of winning open, and he is just that impactful and makes everyone on the floor better. When it comes to screen and rolls, Okafor is not easy to stay with. I mean, he really slashes to the rim, rolls hard when he goes, and that determination makes him hard to defend when that happens. And for D'Angelo Russell, the offensive talent is obvious. But it seems as defense, Clark has a ways to go. Well, he's got the package now. He's got good size. He's not a great, great athlete. He's a good athlete, but not an explosive, powerful athlete. I think he's got to get stronger. And the other pieces, he's got to really be about the mental aspect, the focus, and the consistent effort day in and day out to maximize his, his physical gifts. The first free throw is good. At the line right now is one of the great do-it-all point guards ever. Scorer, playmaker, defender. There's not anything CP3 can't do. Clint Capella, he's checked in for the Rockets. He hits both from the strike. Just solid. Really one of the very best there is at the free throw line. Nets trail by four. Dinwiddie passes to Kira. And Okafor has it in the corner. The three. Back to Carroll. He dishes it to Mozgov. Carroll against Ariza. And Carroll gets it to go. A, a good score inside. And, and the defense really offering very little resistance. Well, they don't have anybody to blame but themselves. Got to prevent them from getting good looks this late in the ball game. You got to come up with stops. Paul kicks to a reason. There's the pick. The three from Harden. Rebounded by the Nets. Their next game is at the American Airlines Center in Dallas for a game with the Mavericks. That'll be the third game of this three-game road trip. Well, you, you see the struggles he's having getting anything to go. Yeah, I'm sure he's frustrated, Greg, because nothing is falling right now. And he's going to keep chipping away at it, and that's the attitude. Stay with it. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. Russell dishes to Okafor. Yeah, you know, one of the more impressive things about Okafor is his patience on offense. I mean, he never seems to be in a hurry. He imposes his will from either paint or the mid-range, and uh, he does a good job, I think, keeping the defense on its heels at all times. Paul kicks to Harden, dishes it to Capella, and some nice passing there by Houston. Lock at six. Anderson the screen. Or the three. A reason no luck. You know what? They're winning, though, despite the fact that he has just been really off. They get it again. Okafor. And it's all evened up. Okafor's got six in the quarter. 
Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. And stolen by Russell to take the lead. And it's good on the way up. The 6'9 wingspan of Russell reaches, picks it clean. Then there he goes off to the races. Looking to get back at the oh! man. And Harden, an absolutely vicious dunker. Terrific at bouncing towards the rim for the epic throwdown. Now a timeout call by Brooklyn. Well, across the board last season, James Harden, Greg, saw his numbers jump through the roof, but he showed improvement both in his defensive engagement as well as his rebounding. Not something that a lot of us saw coming. Yeah, that's a good point. And with Harden, I think the rebounding is the really surprising number. Went from being an average rebounding guard to a great one the last few seasons. He's been showing more of a dedication to all aspects of the game. Rabs check in for Brooklyn. Jeremy Lin comes in for Spencer Dinwiddie. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Hey, guys, I was able to catch Kenny Atkinson's message to his team. If this game's still up for grabs, he told his team, hey, we're in position to take this one, guys. Let's stay focused and stay together, and we'll get it done. We'll see how it plays out, Kevin. Houston's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Harden sets the big for Paul. Harden outside. Three pointer, and a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got five assists tonight. Efficiency has been the hallmark right now down the stretch. He is making the most of his opportunity. Now here's Okafor. Here's Crab. It's good. Look at that basket. He's now five for nine. And so here is Houston. They've led by as many as 11 points. Now here's Paul. Screen by Capella. Harden outside. Lock at six. The feet to Capella. Excellent D there from Mozgov. The Nets have gotten more than 58% of their attempts to go down for them in the fourth quarter. They're 7 of 12. Lynn lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that, you know, Lynn is a really creative scorer, especially when he knifes inside the heart of the defense. He's just got nice body control and a real awareness as to what shot works best. Now, here's Capella. Anderson the screen. And there's a foul called on Alan Grant. That's his first foul. On defense, the Nets. They lead by one. Ariza with the bucket. Yeah, that's two straight three-pointers they've allowed. Here is Lynn. Inside. Here's Okafor. Lynn the pass to Mozgov. Here's Okafor. And it's off from three-point range. Rockets have gone five for nine from the field in the final quarter so far. Lob pass to Capella. And the dunk by Capella. For the floor awareness of Chris Paul. Got to respect that. I mean, whenever one of his guys is open, he's getting the ball to him quickly and on time. Now here's Paul. Okafor with the steal. Lynn against Paul. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Boy, well, Lynn is not only smooth, but he's crafty at getting contact. The physical player who really works to get himself to the line. Jeremy Lynn, an attack guard if there ever was one. He wants to play downhill all the time. Explodes to the rim and forces the defense to react to his drives. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. Falls for Lynn. And Lynn's athleticism certainly is underrated. Back, in fact, Clark, when he played with the Rockets, 
they said he had the quickest first step they'd ever measured. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he is deceptively athletic, and he uses that athleticism at both ends. Defensively, he can get steals and blocks, too, Kevin. LaVert's checked in for the Nets. And going into last season, Jeremy Lin signed with the Nets for that three-year deal and close to 36 mil and, and excited to make his return to really the birthplace of Lin Sanity. Uh, unfortunately, the hamstring injuries cost him a huge chunk of that season. Now here's Lin following the shot by Chris Paul. Mozgov a screen on Paul. Lin dishes to Mozgov. The dunk and the foul, a powerhouse move, and he's got a chance for one more at the line. That's on Clint Capella. And Greg, Jeremy Lin described last season as a year of my prime down the drain. I mean, it had to be demoralizing. Yeah, especially after bouncing around for a few years. He thought he'd found a chance to start and a chance to lead. and Instead, he found himself in dress Find casual the lane. on the Find bench. The lane. One shot. good for Mozgov. And you know the Russian Mozgov is a really valuable big guy. Effective on both ends of the floor and those guys are hard to find. Screen by Capella from deep Harden. Okafor grabs the miss. Okafor's got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. And the pass to Mozgov. There's Crab with the three. The Rockets pull it in. Anderson's got four rebounds in this game. Here's Ariza. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Paul's got his eighth assist here tonight. Like the way Ariza seeks out mid-range jumpers, capable of nailing these shots when he's in rhythm. The heck with the analytics. A good two from a good shooter is as good as a three. Now here's Okafor. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. Anderson's got rebound number five here tonight. Mod pass to Capella. And the dunk by Capella. And you might as well ride him, Kevin. When he's hot like that, feeling it, Capella needs to be written and written hard. Pass to Levert. Crab in the corner. A three-pointer, no good. He's still looking for his first three-pointer of the second half after making just one in the first. Paul for three. Bangs home the trifecta. And it's a six-point rocket lead. And they're just living beyond the arc here, really, the entire fourth quarter. And, you know, this is the time to do it. Sinking triple after triple. And it ends up becoming contagious. Okafor with a screen on Paul. Lynn kicks to Okafor. To end the run. Takes it into the teeth of the D and converts the layup. Okafor's got eight points in the quarter. And they've shown a little extra hustle on the offensive glass here in the second half. Second chance points are starting to add up for them, and they can use every one of them. Now, here's Ariza. Six to shoot. Charity stripe shot. Capella, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And the Rockets lead by six. Shots are just flowing to him right now, having a really strong court. Okafor, the pass to Levert, and he makes good on the layup. Man, I like the competitive spirit of Levert. Never backs down from taking these enormous shots. That shows you how confident he is. Now, here is Harden. Over to the wing. Puts it up from 17 and misses it off the right side of the rim. And low percentage look on that one. Not sure what he was thinking. I agree with you. Not a good shot. Not good offense. They can get a much better look than that. But they're going to need to be patient to do so. And so it's Houston with it. After the basket by Brooklyn. Paul outside. And some nice passing there by Houston. It's Harden with the drive. No good from 11 feet. And being that close to the hoop, I thought he had enough room to finish that one. Then the pass to Levert. The basket good off the assist from Lynn. Levert showing you can rise up from deep. A quality shooter when given room to fire. Harden outside. Anderson the screen. 
There's Paul. The pick gave him all the room he needed, and he knocks down the Jay. Paul's got 12 points here in the second half. Brooklyn's gone into a funk from downtown in the fourth. Only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the bucket. Lynn dishes to Okafor, and then Okafor slams it in. Really, Okafor is the kind of guy that can change momentum for you. I mean, he handles pressure well, and he usually comes up with big shots when his team needs it. Now here's Harden. And so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. And now we'll get a perspective here on how the hustle game has been going for the Nets. Contested shots and block shots. They're bread and butter defensively. They're giving up no easy looks. And, and also, how about the points they've gotten in transition or on the fast break tonight? That's been a huge factor as well. He drops the first one, and that ties the game up. You really got to appreciate how smart Harden is. Incredible at changing pace and gears quickly. Keeps the defense very much off balance. And so making both free throws, that'll give them the lead here. He's got ice water in his veins, fellas. No way he's going to miss from the line when the game's still hanging in the balance. I've seen him make too many in this situation. Now here's Okafor. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Chris Paul picks up that the game up. The Nets making a switch here. Russell's checked in. And so he's good on both free throws. And that gives them the lead. Yeah, critical that he's able to convert there. Now they've taken the lead. Here's Harden. Again, the miss by Harden. I wonder if switching baskets really threw him off. I mean, because he can't get anything to fall this half. Osgov, a screen on Paul. Russell, it falls! And this atmosphere is banana. Electric in here. I mean, that was a tremendous shot. This crowd all over. Turned up. Now here's Paul. Anderson, the screen. Anderson with the screen for a reason. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's on Jaleel Okafor. And you know, the length of Ariza is tough for defenses to deal with. Amazing watching him draw contact while getting into a shot. the first and that brings them within two here. The well-seasoned Ariza continues to make a difference. I mean, this veteran is a reliable scorer and a quality, quality defender. And the second free throw, no good. A tough break there. Yeah, being down two points instead of one thanks to the free throw miss makes getting a stop here absolutely critical. And it's still within reach. But they have to be really close to perfect from here on out. I mean, they have to get their offense right on target, right on point immediately. Now here's Paul. And there's the whistle. Illegal screen. 
and you can tolerate gas like that sometimes, but in a close game, man, I tell you what, that really hurts. 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and an intentional foul right there. Had to foul, and on that occasion, to stop the clock, that's the enemy in this situation. And you know what, Greg, who knows? A few misses at the strike, and they're right there within range. You know, late game free throws are a lot different than early game free throws in terms of making. So he gets them both, and it's a four-point ball game. Boy, so calm, composed. Love how he took his time and drained the important free throws. Big-time stuff there. Timeout called the Rockets. They're behind by four. There's 14 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Guys, what do you think? It's going to be interesting to see what they draw up to get this quick shot. Whatever it is, it's got to be fast. I mean, can't waste any time at this point. And now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Jaleel Okafor. And he's provided them with a major mismatch on that low block tonight. That They've been able to lean on his scoring in the paint. And if nothing else has worked, he, he's given them a reliable option on every possession. There's 14 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The three from Harden. And it's Lynn with the rebound. And now they foul and stop the clock. No choice but to foul there, but, it, but he's probably the last guy you want to see on the line. But there was no time really to be selective. Stopping the clock was the priority. He drops the first one, and that puts them up by five. He's off on the free throw and able to get that second one to drop in. Timeout called the Rockets. They're down by five. Eight seconds left to play here in the fourth. What's your take, guys? And they're going to have to score. Quick foul. Can't waste any time here. Greg, one possession at a time. And really, as you said, it's all about clock management right now. Eight seconds left to play in the final quarter. Here's Ariza. The Rockets with another miss. And so it's Brooklyn with the win. A narrow win under difficult circumstances, Greg, as the visiting team. It really was, but that didn't seem to bother them. I mean, road team, home team, all I know is they were the better team. Well said. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. See you next time.